everyone can please find your seats quickly. We're ready to start the afternoon session. And the uh, first talk is by Asya Fisher from the University of Bonn. The uh, is up there. So, um, hello, everyone. I just moved to University Bochum uh, two weeks ago. Um, thanks a lot to the um, organizers for the invitation. Um, we heard a bit about deep learning already, and um, artificial neural networks, of course, are uh, really simple models of their biological counterparts. Um, so I think it's a really interesting approach to design new um, learning me um, mechanisms or architectures uh, by asking if we can let us expire by inspire us by the um, learning mechanisms um, of the brain. Um, on the one hand, of course, um, uh, from the view of a machine learner with a hope to develop uh, more efficient learning algorithms, but also, um, on the other hand, um, because it might lead to new insights in the field of neuroscience, so I could also have put a picture like with two-sided arrow or a circle between neuroscience and machine learning. Um, and the things I want to present today are based on the work I did um, during my postdoc um, at the Montreal Institute of Learning Algorithms together with Yosha Bengio, uh, Thomas, um, Dai Cheng, um, Tony, and um, Benjamin. Um, and um, the um, yeah, project um, came up uh, by thinking about if we can find more biological plausible learning algorithms that could be applied to deep learning algorithms. So I assume most um, of the audience now about uh, deep neural networks and how the learning work there, but I will really fastly cover it to give a motivation. So um, the simple networks we use in artificial neural networks, or simple neural models we use there, are just, just these uh, weighted sum of inputs, which are then um, yeah, inputted into some nonlinear activation function. And we can take these um, simple neurons to build um, bigger networks, where we in a supervised setting have some inputs, some hidden neurons to com compute in the middle, and then some output neurons that should output the mapping or the output corresponding to the input. So we want to learn a mapping from input to output variables. From mathematical view, these networks are just a very nested function where we always alternate between, alternate between um, weight matrices and uh, this nonlinear activation functions. Um, and learning just uh, is done by stochastic gradient descent. So we look at the error a network does and see this error as a um, function of the parameters and then uh, calculate the gradient with respect to these parameters and adapts, shifts the weights or parameters a bit in the, to the negative direction of the gradient. So this is stochastic gradient descent given by this formula. And the uh, algorithm used to p um, calculate the gradients is just um, called back propagation. We heard this before. Um, and um, where we, we usually have one feed forward pass in the new network, calculating the output. Based on the output, we calculate the error. And then there's a performed a back pass where we calculate the gradients with respect to the parameters of one layer, taking the um, values we start on the feed forward pass and the gradients we calculated for the previous layer. So we always have these alternating between a feed forward pass uh, and a backward pass. And of course, this is not really plausible from a biological perspective um, for several reasons, but except uh, like most of all, because uh, we don't believe that it's um, very uh, plausible that we have two kinds of uh, calculations or neural computations. One for calculating or the prediction or performing the inference, and one for calculating a gradient and propagating it backwards. So um, on the long way um, to reach finally biological plausible models, we did a small step by introducing this framework which um, where the neural computation corresponds to both the inference and prediction making and the error back propagation and which uh, has also the nice property that the weight updates um, correspond to spike timing dependent plasticity, which is observed in, um, yeah, in the brain in the learning processes, at, or at least in some. So um, the outline of my talk is the following. I want to introduce our um, energy-based model framework um, where we ap um, have the approximation of back propagation, and then I want to um, go to the link to um, STDP. So let's look at a different um, kind of um, neural model than that that we saw before, or neural update model. So we, let's consider a, a vector 
ST here at um, some time t, which covers um, the whole network. So the single elements of this vector would be the state of the single neurons, which from a biological plausible or biological view could, could be um, correspond to um, time integrated, integrated voltage, voltage potential. Um, and then we would get an update of these neurons. Um, so we get a new state of the neurons based on this function R, which can be seen as a function that takes the current state of the neuron and outputs uh, a new state for all neurons, which is based on uh, the neighboring states. So it outputs some kind of target state. This difference here then would be um, so this, the, the direction of the current state and the target state, and we would shift the current state a bit in this direction with a small epsilon e here. Um, we could also um, include some noise, for example, a sample from a Gaussian with um, <coughs> zero mean in this model to take into account that um, all these spiking effects of neurons have some random effects. So if we now look at this, um, like the um, yeah, continuous um, counterpart to this discrete um, update formula, this could, would correspond to the following um, differential equation, which uh, is the um, yeah, integrator or lead key integrator neural model, which is used in computational neuroscience. So this is a nice property. Which it can be seen as a discrete version of this leaky integrator model. And now let's assume that the whole model or the whole system um, is a probabilistic graphical model, an underactive gra probabilistic graphical model, which means that um, the probability distribution over all states that the system could take would be given by this um, Gibbs distribution. So. Um, e to the power of minus some energy function of the states. Mm, and let's further assume that the update direction that we take, so this target state minus the current state that we saw before, that this update direction is proportional to the logarithm um, or log probability gradient with respect to the states, or equi uh, equivalently minus the energy gradients with respect to the states. Um, this would mean that if we update a neuron in this direction, we would move the state of the neurons a bit into um, the direction of getting more probable states. And if we look more carefully to it, we can see like we can write um, S uh, tilde to denote the noisy state to get a bit easier um, notation here. So this is again the same update formula that we saw before. We um, subtract the net noisy state and then this exactly gets with our assumption the ne negative energy gradient. And what is left from here we have um, is just the noise term. And we can rewrite now all states in the terms of the noisy states. So this is noisy state minus the noise. We do the same here. Um, and then reorder terms. And then we get something that looks like this. And this is um, interesting from a mathematical point of view because what we see is that we have our <coughs> uh, yeah, new state is given by um, the old state, which is shifted a, a bit in the direction of uh, the negative um, energy gradient, and then we have s add some noise terms. And that is exactly what is done when performing um, a Markov chain Monte Carlo or a Langevin Markov chain Monte Carlo inference, where um, usually there needs to be an additional acceptance step, so it's not um, really mathematical super clean, but it, it shows us that um, these um, leak integrator neurons perform some kind of um, probabilistic inference that lead, us to, lead to more prob probable states, uh, which is really nice because um, it was often assumed that um, maybe um, inference in the brain uh, corresponds to uh, moving somehow to more probable states under uh, some kind of probability distribution. And so, so in this sense, um, to uh, that they increase in coherence between an external signal and the um, internal uh, representation of this signal. Um, may I ask, I'm, I'm, I'm of course. a little bit, little bit lost, sort of, um, sort of what's, what's the general picture. So you started off with uh, backpropagation as sort of the thing that you want to uh, change, change or replace. Change or make <laughs> and then you, you went to a graphical model representation. So would the idea be, be that you have the input, you have a target output in this graphical model, 
and you want so and you have changed the formalism from the gradient descent on so backpropagation to this graphical model representation in order to make the mathematics more tractable because you have distributions and you can work with an energy function, but still you're actually solving the same problem but sort of in a probabilistic framework. Is that the idea? Yes, yeah, so it's the idea to move to the probabilistic framework, but um, we will see in the end that um, in this probabilistic framework, uh, interestingly, some of the um, prop, um, or, um, propagations or neural updates correspond to backpropagation in the end. So okay. this is where we will end up in the end. So, but up until now, we, we just saw that we can look at a different kind of neural um, update, which is like the leaky integrator network, and that we can interpret the whole system as a probabilistic I mean, model. You made a few assumptions in order to arrive at this new model. So what gets lost or what gets changed compared to the uh, uh, backpropagation uh, scenario if you make these assumptions? Okay. Um, maybe, maybe we can uh, talk about it later because we'll see, like, we will come back to the backpropagation connection soonish. So um, uh, now we, we made this assumption that we had these update direction is um, equal to the uh, like uh, logar um, or energy gradient. Uh, and we want, uh, I want to show that this is not a, like a big assumption because we can just, uh, for example, look at the following energy function which is really um, like really closely related to the Hopfeld model or the energy function used in restricted Boltzmann machines. Um, so we ha would have, uh, here the Wij would be the weight between some unit i and j. Um, and we have some function rho, which can, is a, a, some nonlinear monotonic function between zero and one, which could from a biological view um, seen as a, be seen as a, um, function that plots the activation of the neuron to a firing rate. So we would have this sum of all uh, neighboring units, weighted by weights, um, something like a bias term from a uh, from machine learning perspective. Um, and um, the nice thing is here, if we assume that uh, the connection from, or the weight between A and J and J and I, I is a uh, the same, which of course is not super logically plausible. Uh, two, we get a, um, the energy derivative of this energy function with respect to the states. It's just given by this formula. And we can see that we have one part which looks like the, the information uh, given weighted information or um, firing rate from the neighboring uh, neurons. And we have a part which is the old state. So we have exactly what we did as an assumption, having that the energy gradient is exactly given by some function which could be seen as the uh, input from the surrounding neurons and uh, the old minus the old state. So now one can, uh, could wonder what, what uh, if we have such a system, um, what the um, equilibria of the systems are. Like if we run a, let the system run, what happens in the long time? Of course, in the, uh, if we would ignore the noise and if we have a deterministic system, we would end up uh, with fixed points where um, the energy gradient is zero. So the new state that would be supposed, uh, yeah, target state would be exactly the same state and the network wouldn't move. So we would converge to some kind of uh, fixed point. If we would uh, go into the stochastic case, we just saw that um, the updates approximately run uh, some kind of Langevin Markov chain. So we uh, would approximately converge to the station distribution of that Markov chain. Um, but we will focus now for on this deterministic case because it makes things a bit easier. <laughs> so now we, now we get to the learning um, part. To go to learning, we need to move a bit more to the um, supervised uh, machine learning scenario. So we need to distinguish between observable and um, not in, uh, observable um, units. So we have, let, let's distinguish in our system between some input variable x and some output variable y and some hi hidden variables. This could be arbitrary ordered, but let's, for simplicity, let's focus to the standard layered system here. Uh, then we could imagine that we have a exter like some external state that, that we would like to um, model. So this is a target state. We would like our variable y or our unit y to output exactly this state d. So if we would like to do perform um, inference in such a system, we would clamp these um, 
visible um, observable variables or um, external um, uh, yeah, stimulus and then um, perform inference, let the system settle to a fixed point, see what um, it output it puts here at Y and hope that it's close to D. Otherwise, we need to change uh, the parameters of the system. So um, let's assume now that we are not outputting the right target and we shifting the, the parameters or the state Y a bit in the direction of the um, target variable. <coughs> so again, we, 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 let, uh, we have a, let our network settle to a um, fixed point and then regard these um, Y is zero now because it's a time zero um, as uh, our prediction. We shift now. Uh, we, we, we could measure uh, the, the diff how much uh, the output differs from our target by this uh, squared um, mean. And um, then we could change our, in the first step, change these output variables a bit in the direction of the target. Um, so this would correspond to one step of uh, gradient descent with respect to this error function. Now we could ask what happens to the rest of the system uh, now that we um, moved the output variables a bit because now we are not in the fixed point anymore and we could ask how this influences the rest of the system. Um, and so we can like, like this HL as long as the highest hidden layer um, which was not changed in the, first, in the first time step which just changed the output variables a bit so they stayed the hidden variable state in the, yeah, in the fixed point. Um, this is just the update rule. We have here the, um, the fixed point slightly adapted in the, or shifted in the in direction of delta y and the output variables. Um, yeah, and we still have h0 here because in the first time step they didn't change. And we have now an index h here because we are not only interested in the usually R was a, a function that outputted all a, st a new state for all the variables in the network, but now we are only interested in the variables that we output for the highest uh, hidden layer. If we now make a Taylor approximation of this um, uh, function R uh, in the fixed point, um, something um, interesting happens because uh, the, first um, yeah, the first term First order term would be exactly H0, so this vanishes with cancelled out with this. And uh, in the second approximation, we only have the change in Y. So we only need to um, take into account the Y terms, which would be the derivative of um, R to Y and uh, times these delta Y. And then we have some higher order terms, which we can ignore in the setting of a layered system because they're exactly zero there. So I will ignore them from on now on. And now we can make use um, of the fact that we, that we saw before that the, um, um, our function R is just the derivative of some energy function. Or the main thing is here that it's a derivative of some function <laughs> because we want to make use of the um, symmetry of um, second order derivatives um, or second derivatives. So because um, we look at this part now, we have it here. Um, we um, have here um, R. Um, therefore, the output variables a, uh, h in the index, it means it was an energy function derivative with respect uh, to h. And we take a derivative to y now. So we can also change that to take the derivative of r to y and then the derivative to h. This is nice because the, um, in the fixed point, this term is exactly again given by uh, y zero, so everything collapses, and we have uh, the derivative of the loss function with respect to the parameters. And here the comes the connection to uh, backpropagation. So, if we start in such an energy-based system, um, form a fixed point, and look at the first steps of neural computation, they exactly resemble um, backpropagation, except from this small term epsilon. And we could continue this kind of arguments in the next time step and would see that in each time step the perturbations would reach another layer and every time these, um, yeah, these perturbations would uh, look like the derivative of um, the loss with respect to the parameters of that layer. So we have a system that at least in the first 
steps of iteration, starting from a fixed point, have a neural computation that backpropagates the error. So is this a layered network with symmetric weights? Yeah, this also works in other kinds of networks, but this is a, yeah, it's a, like to make it easier and to get rid of these um, second order terms or third order terms in um, the Taylor um, approximation, we um, need a layered system. But yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's not so illogical plausible. <laughs> So what would happen if the symmetric, if the weights are not symmetric? I mean, would they become symmetric through the dynamics? Um, and I think I think we didn't try that. Yeah. Uh, uh, it could be a hope. I think uh, there's some work of Timothy that indicates that some net weights can get uh, or appear to be uh, symmetric. Yeah. <laughs> but in the, like if we have start with this undirected model, we have, of course have like undirected weights and uh, undirected links. So it would be uh, um, like naturally or to have these uh, symmetric rights. Yeah, I was wondering whether you could have sort of a directed model uh, and then the dynamics would just sort of naturally lead to symmetric rates. I mean, that so that you don't need it as an assumption could be a result of a dynamics. Yes, could, could be, that would be nice. So now we come to the um, link to spike uh, time dependent plasticity. So what was backpropagated up until now was a gradient with respect to the state of the networks. Just to clarify, so <laughs> the, the idea is that the backpropagation happens sort of uh, synapse by synapse or layer by layer in the time uh, in, 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 in per time step. So yes, so it would be five-layer network. You need five time steps in exactly. order for the, uh, uh, a gradient to propagate backwards. Yeah. But you avoid this sort of un implausible sort of going back and forth of the of the. Derivatives. Exactly, and you wouldn't have like a other kind of calculation, like calculating the gradient and directly backpropagating this gradient yeah, or so. Sort of yeah, exactly. It automatically comes up by this yeah. neural update. Yeah. Um, yeah? So did I understand you correctly that this happens when, when the loss function, the error of prediction, is actually the energy for your motor? Not the loss, like the loss function would be the difference to the uh, target, like between the output of the network and the target, like standard um, mean squared error or something. Um, two distinct functionals, one is the energy and one is the loss. Yes, the loss is like uh, just me measuring the uh, difference between the output of the network and the target. And uh, the energy is, um, is a function that describes the probability function or a probability distribution over uh, the states. For a given set of weights. For a given set of weights, right. It's not related in any direct way to the loss function. No. Yeah. We are not optimizing with the loss function the probability distribution. So, but up until now we saw how the, does it's a gradient with respect to the states is propagated, uh, similar to backpropagation. But uh, we don't, didn't saw how we can use this signal to update the weights, what we need to do for learning. And the nice thing is about, I will talk now about these white updates, and they, that they uh, resemble uh, spike timing dependent plasticity. Um, so that's what we've seen so far. The, the updates of hidden neurons is um, yeah, proportional to the um, loss or gradient loss. Loss gradient. <laughs> uh, so um, let's now look at a certain white which uh, connects uh, some um, postsynaptic uh, neuron I and uh, a lower layer uh, neuron J. Um, and uh, we could, re if we regard the, fun the state of the uh, postsynaptic neuron as a function of the weights, we could apply the chain rule like it's uh, usually done and say that the weight update should be um, given by um, the update of the hidden um, neurons and then the derivative of the hidden neurons with respect to the weight. weight. So um, if we saw before that we have this kind of from the energy function stemming new update um, of the um, state. And the, if we take uh, the derivative of this with respect to the whites, we just end up with um, or, yeah, this multiplied by um, hj. So we go back here now in, a, in the old um, general um, yeah, uh, notation where we uh, noted all variables by s to make it more general. That's not for the hit only for the hidden unon units. So we would get a weight update that is proportional to the uh, rate of change 
uh, of the um, postsynaptic rite, which would be H, data H here, and um, the presynaptic firing rate. And this um, has a nice property be to when behaves very similar to um, STDP. Um, I assume that most people here know what um, STDP is, but it's uh, just a simple learning rule that um, was uh, observed at least in some um, in biological systems. So this is data that uh, taken from biological experiments. So it's a learning rule that um, if we have two neurons, a presynaptic and a postsynaptic one, and the presynaptic fires shortly before the postsynaptic um, neuron fires, the connection is strengthened. Uh, if we have it uh, in the different orders, so we have a post a postsynaptic spike before the presynaptic spikes, um, spikes, we get a um, we decrease the weight between the neurons of the synaptic weight. Um, how would this work with symmetric weights? I mean, wouldn't this kind of increase WIJ and decrease WJI? Um, yeah, we would assume that it's uh, always like we have this um, synaptic uh, or. or have the symmetric weights, and always if we update one, the other would need it to be updated as well. I mean, but like this rule in and by itself, like uh, if yeah, this would of course it's if I have one, uh, like uh, like if, uh, uh, if the presynaptic neuron is connecting to the post synaptic neuron, and there is a back backward connection, um, kind of time averaged, one is going to fire uh, before another more or less than the other way. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I would say. Usually, this is, of course, not in a symmetric setting in this biological rule, of course. This is is that my proposal would not work, because if you have two neurons and you connect them with asymmetric weights, yes. and then one fires earlier than the other one, the one weight would be would increased, be, yeah. the other one would be yeah, increased true. Your asymmetric weights. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So have you considered alternative uh, STDP formulations? I mean, there's a lot of evidence for more heavy in, uh, STDP in, in various regions of the brain. Yeah, maybe you can tell me about it afterwards because I'm not so much specialist about the different forms, but I would be curious about. Um, so, okay, this is the, um, like a biological evidence. So we have uh, increase, like this is a delta time difference between the spikes, and we have um, an increase which is as larger as closer both signals are, if, um, or a decrease if it's in the different order. So now one can ask, shortly think about why it should work to write it down in this way of um, yeah, using the uh, postsynaptic um, you know, change rate of change and the presynaptic firing rate. And um, this is easy to understand because we could uh, look at this blue dotted line, could be the um, presynaptic spike. And then we have an increasing, um, so you could assume to have an increasing postsynaptic uh, fi uh, like rate of change. This would mean that uh, since the rate is increasing, we have a higher probability to have spikes after the um, presynaptic um, spike occurred, and as uh, like having it before. So um, we also um, uh, yeah, performed simulations um, yeah, based on um, spikes and the um, yeah, uh, rate of change, and we saw that uh, we get a, uh, the weight updates get like form a really similar pattern to what was observed in biological for uh, embolological experiments, like this, the um, <coughs> data we saw before. So after I left Montreal, um, Benjamin and Joshua continued and um, yeah, um, based on these uh, ideas and uh, developed a mathematically bit more um, beautiful framework, I would say, because they started with uh, yeah, uh, concatenating the energy and uh, the loss which is weighted on how much, with some parameter which says how much the output neurons are influenced now by the, from the outside world. So they could um, put this all together and then got a, um, got a theorem saying that you, we, when calculating the gradient at a, at a fixed point where we don't have any uh, pressure from the outside, uh, that this could be calculated if we have, we look at the fixed point when we clamp the neurons to the uh, target a little bit. And if we uh, minus the gradient of the new energy, if we run the network without any influence from the outside. And this would then be similar to a weight update that, that looks like this, and which is really close to the uh, Hebrian learning rule. So we would have so some um, firing weights in the system where the output is um, 
where we clamp the output neurons uh, a bit to the tar or to the or shift it a bit to the target direction, depending on this parameter better, then I'll let it run to a fixed point, collect the parameters, and have the same uh, or same values for the free system where we don't influence the target. So this is uh, the heavy end would be that we really force the output to be the target. So for if we would run, let better run to infinity. And this can also be seen as some kind of symmetric version of SDP, which then would um, take care for this uh, yeah, symmetric weight update. So this makes uh, this approach a bit more beautiful. So um, to summarize, um, Langevin, uh, we have seen that um, the uh, update um, of um, the leaky integrator neuron model performs um, Langevin Markov chain Monte Carlo inference. We saw that um, the um, earth, yeah, early um, steps of inference, when starting from um, a fixed point, correspond to a back propagation of the um, error with respect to the states. Um, and we saw that we can um, associate the um, a connected weight update to the um, uh, yes, uh, STDP, which is uh, also a really nice uh, a property. Um, for future work, I have, would find it highly interesting to think about how we could um, unsuper do unsupervised learning in a more plausible way. And um, with respect to the new insights, that um, also like there's uh, some dendrites, dendrite that's right that play also a role in learning. It would be interesting to see if we can also how this influences a machine learning system. And I'm looking forward to. Um, Timothy Lillicrab's talk because he thinks I think he presents some ideas in this direction. Okay, so those are the references. Thanks, and I'm open for questions. Okay, there is time for questions. Yes. So um, it seems as if you want the plasticity to operate after the network has reached a fixed point. What would happen if plasticity were on during the transient dynamic? You mean before uh, when it's um, like it would learn all the time, like um, even if it's not in a in a fixed point. Um, I'm not sure how it would be in the in our simple in the in our simple system, but in the uh, system of this um, equilibrium propagation, I think the updates could be seen as. Um, uh, but it also starts from a fixed point, but it could be seen as a time integrated update from moving from this fixed point to a fixed point where the uh, output units are shifted a little bit. <coughs> Can you give us some idea about the power of this approximation to backprop? Or what kind of things? Um, yeah, it's not so efficient uh, <laughs> like backpropagation. Um, I think they reached. Um, um, uh, we, uh, like in equilibrium propagation, they, they reached zero or training error on MNIST, <laughs> but it was not as efficient as it would have been with a simple feed forward neural network and back propagation. So it's, we are not at the uh, goal of getting more efficient learning algorithms yet. But it's a proof of concept that it at least can learn a data set like that. So, did I understand it correctly that the states that the network is inferring, which are D or theta in the later version, enter the modal directly? Um, so does it have to be a part of the physics realizing the modal? Yeah, like the output state, you mean, uh, needs to be, uh, would need to be something given from the outside, you mean, or? Yeah, so there is, there is the L term. Yes. The yeah, yeah, we would have something. It depends on, on the, on the, on the the desired outputs. Exactly, we would have a system that had, had would have an external signal from the outside. Yeah, and uh, like in the supervised uh, setting, it's always like that, right? We have some input and want to get some output, which is somehow given from the outside world. But uh, yeah, it's true that it's not so clear how in a biological system this shifting into the right direction to the target would work. Any final questions? Thank you.